Welcome to the Christian Worship Hour with Pastor Harold E. Salem. The mission of the Christian Worship Hour is to share the good news of the gospel with a lost world and to encourage and equip Christians to pray for our families and our nations. Please join with us and the members of our church family as we study the incomparable Word of God. And stay tuned to learn more about how you can be a part of God's amazing plan to reach the world. We hope you will be blessed by today's program. I'm Pastor Salem, and I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. Here another week has rolled by, and here we are, worshiping the Lord together. And oh, what a joy it is, and what a privilege it is to have us all gathered around the throne of God and worship the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we just hope that you'll just be blessed and helped today as we have our worship service. And our sermon is going to be entitled, A Soft Pillow for a Weary Head. A Soft Pillow for a Weary Head. So maybe call your friends. If you have a friend that's kind of having some troubles or kind of discouraged and, and weary and lonely, give them a ring. This can really bless them because it's God's Word. It's not me. It's God's Word. But before I do that, let me read some of the letters. And we thank you for the letters. It's just wonderful. And we just read every one of them. Here's a letter from Sebring, Florida. I'm 93 and have been so discouraged due to unsolvable problems of every kind. <clears throat> then I found your TV program and, uh, and from your message about Jesus and faith. I would put aside my pity party and directed my thoughts to finding Jesus and trust in the Lord once again. And so that's what we're doing. We're, that's where the strength comes from. You remember what the psalmist said, Psalm 27, verse 14? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And sometimes you just have to lean on Jesus. You can't figure anything out, but Jesus can figure it out. Lean on Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Here's a letter from uh, Abaski in Montana. I know I pronounced that terrible, and God bless you, friends, yeah, but uh, it's a good letter, and that's what counts. We would like to receive your offer of the book concerning suicide since one of our grandsons committed this act. The family has had a hard time recovering. Your work may be helpful. Thank you for addressing this subject. Well, we've written a little booklet, a 10-page booklet on if a Christian, can a Christian who commits suicide uh, go to heaven? And the, and the answer is yes, indeed. If he's a Christian, if he's trusting Jesus, he's in heaven. And we, it's a 10-page book, and, and it's all out of the Bible. It isn't that I died and went to heaven and came back, or I had visions or heard voices. None of that, just the Bible, that beautiful Word of God. Eight different reasons, and we've got 10 pages. And so you write to us and just write suicide. We'll know what it means. And uh, we're sending it free and postpaid, but if you can help us with it, of course, it costs us money to publish it and costs us money to send it. It costs about a dollar to send it, I think. I don't know. But anyway, if you can help us, well, you send a gift, and if not, that's all right. But I know we'll get letters from people in prison, and we'll get some on Social Security. They don't have the money, but they got the problem. You write. You'll get it free and postpaid. Now, here's a man in prison in Rhode Island. Cranston, Rhode Island, and he says, I also wanted to let you know that I'm starting to finally come out of my shell and witness to people about the Lord Jesus. I've been encouraging people here to attend church services. I recently received a pen pal request, request from somebody in Australia, of all places, and I wrote back asking if he knew who Jesus Christ is and if he has accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. I look forward to hearing back from him. Here's a prisoner, and he's a preacher. St. Paul was a preacher. He was in prison. And here's his dear brother, and he's talking to this other person, writes in, do you know Jesus? And that's the whole, that's all that counts. Do you know Jesus? Got to have Jesus. Here's a letter from Magnolia, Minnesota. Oh, I like this. Listen to this, friends. This is a, a man, a husband. He writes, he says, my wife and I can no longer attend church, so we watch the Christian worship hour. Now listen how they do it. I watch it here in Magnolia, Minnesota, where I live. My watch, wife watches it from the Colonial Manor Nursing Home in Lakefield, Minnesota. 
We feel like we've been to church with your good Bible preaching, and God bless you. <clears throat> and so here they are, <clears throat> and they are, <clears throat> though they're, <clears throat> excuse me, and though they're miles apart, they're worshiping together. And isn't that beautiful? And the Lord Jesus is there, the same Lord Jesus, the same Spirit of God, and they are at the throne of God worshiping together. Just beautiful. One more that I'd like to read is the Superior, Wisconsin. <clears throat> Excuse me. As a retired United States Air Force officer, I really appreciated hearing you mention the t topic of suicide. As you may know, we currently lose about 22 former vets per day, whether it's due to feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, depression, inadequate medical treatment, or most often the immeasurable impact of invisible wounds, or all of the above, approximately one ex-vet every hour and three minutes decides to end their life. Isn't that sad? And so we need to pray for our service people. And I, some of my best friends are in the service. I lost one of my best friends on Iwo Jima, uh, Glenn Bixby, a handsome young man. And uh, he gave his life for his country. And we ought to be very thankful to God for these people that have uh, given their lives and some their limbs. And uh, some of them have emotional problems that are almost impossible to overcome. We need to pray for our people in this service. And so if you'd like to write, if you'd like to get our little paper, paper on the Christian committing suicide. Or we have our new song. If you like that, you can write to us at the Christian Worship Hour. And the box is 2002, 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. But now, let's look at this, a soft pillow for a weary head. You know, life is filled with uh, good things and bad things. Sometimes everything just breaks perfect and we're so happy and everything's just real wonderful. And then sometimes things happen and nothing fits together and the puzzle doesn't fit together and nothing fits, works right and we pray and we trust and we hope and everything seems to go wrong. And nothing goes right and circumstances of distress all over the place. And... And that happens to the Christians and the non-Christian. That happens to the good and the evil alike. It's just among all people. God, do you know, sends his reign on the just and the unjust alike. They both get the same amount of his sunshine. And so many times we get the same kind of setbacks. And so how do we handle these setbacks? That's what we want to know. What do we do when we get these sorrows and these hurts and these buffets? And some ha people handle them in sort sad of a sort meaningless way. And they'll say, well, that's just the roll of the dice. That's the cards that I was dealt, and so I'll play them. And then they just, you just throw up their hands and let the thing go and see what happens. That's, that's the way some people are. They have no faith. They don't know Jesus. They don't know God. And so they just feel, well, they're just like the wind blows, whatever way the wind's going to blow. And then there's some that think that, well, there's impersonal happenings of life and that there was a God and he set the world in motion. And after he made it and he set it in motion, then he just let it go. And sometimes good things happen and sometimes bad things happen. And so uh, either way, there you are, you take it on the chin. And what do they say? Keep a stiff upper lip. Now, what does that mean? A stiff upper lip of all the dumb things. And But that's the way they live. But there's a third way. There's a third way to look at it. And this is this. St. Paul says, we are not left just to sport and chance that what might happen. We're not like some, left to some, like some computer that's turned loose and going. Paul says there's a kind, loving, caring God behind all of the actions of life. And everything that happens, God is there. And no matter how small or insignificant we are, or how small and insignificant the events of life are, the wonderful God, there's a wonderful God that knows all about it. And, he ha and no matter who we are, and as a consequence, the all-knowing, all-loving God cares and plans and provides and directs and brings good out of evil. You want to stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. The apostle put, Paul puts it like this. 
All things work together for good to those who love the Lord. All of them. Romans 8, 28. Look it up. Make a mark. Paul is saying that there's a, he says, there's a sun, there's a silver lining at every cloud. There's, there's joy waiting for us even in the middle of trials and troubles. No matter how dark the night, there's a light. There's a light in that night. And look to the Lord Jesus. He says that all things work together to, for good. He says it's a pattern. And everything, and if he just said some things are good or a few things are good, but Paul says all things are good. Everything has a purpose, and that purpose is for our good and God's glory. And that's what Paul is telling us and God is telling us here. And I found people that will question this verse and they'll say, oh, how can it be? Paul says, I know, we know, he says. We don't, we don't hope, we don't guess, we don't wish. He says, we know, K-N-O-W, know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. I know it. And this so he's telling us. That's because we're in the hands of a living, loving, merciful God. And all these things are making sense. They have a reason. They have a purpose. And God is working them out for his glory and for our good. And consequently, because God is behind it and taking care of all things, they are working together for good. Now let me point out, there's, this is a, there's a limitation to this. And don't miss this and listen carefully. This verse is not for everybody. It is not for everybody. It is only for those who accepted Jesus. Those who have opened their heart and said, Jesus, please come into my heart and take away my sin. And I'll forsake my sin the best I can and I'll follow you and, those, and make you the Lord of my life and I'll serve you the best I can. But you have to have Jesus in your life. And Jesus says that as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the children of God. So you're not a child of God till you receive Jesus. So do it right this minute. You can do it now if you've never done so before. Ask Jesus into your life. Now if you have done that, then you have this great, wonderful promise. And this promise tells us that this promises will all work for good. Now, the things in themselves, the circumstances of life may not be good. It doesn't say that there won't be hard things and bitter things. It doesn't say that there are going to be things we don't understand because they're all going to be there. And so when we, some things that have happened in life are very, very bad like pain and disappointment and sorrow and heartache and hatred and persecution. And you can make a list a mile long. These hard things of life are working together for good. That's what God tells us. For those who respond to God's love, for those who listen to his leadership and lean on him and trust in him, then he works these things out. But you have to have Jesus. You have to have God in your heart. So there is, an, there's, there, we just have to say that if we're sure that we know the Lord to them that love God, as many as received him. And if we love God, all these things will work out for good. You know, all kinds of things happen to all kinds of people. God deals in many ways, the same way as he does with a sinner and a saint alike. The writer of Ecclesiastes put it like this. He says, I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. It's true. God makes his sun to shine on the, on the good and the evil, the rain on the good and the bad. These things happen to all of us. By and large, the same general run event, events run to the, all of the people in the world, whether they're good or they're bad, whether they're Christians or not. Sorrow and sickness and losses and all of these things and failures and disappointments. But while the same kind of things happen to all people, the results are not the same. They are, our results are not the same. Remember the story what Jesus told about the two houses? They say had two houses, the same rain descended, the same floods came, the same winds blew upon those houses, but one, it wasn't, didn't end up the same way, did it? One fell and one stood. 
And so when these things come to us, I have seen it. So the same storm that will bring some people close to God will drive some people away from God. The very same snowstorm or blizzard or whatever it is, or drought or hailstorm, it'll bring some people closer to God and it'll put some people farther away from God. And it's just, listen here, friends, it's what we're going to make of it. It's what we're, how we're going to accept it and deal with it. And we have to see that the things that happen to us, the hard and the bitter things, instead of becoming angry, we submit to the Lord. The same sun that melts the snow hardens the clay. The same sun. And so it's up to you. You are going to decide. Why does it happen? Because the soul isn't right with God. They become bitter and they become hard because they don't know Jesus and they don't love God and their soul isn't right and they respond in a terrible way. But the next person, his heart is open to God, his heart is open to Jesus. He loves the Lord, come rain or come shine. And in the midst of the storm, he's praising God and he'll be like Job who said, though he slay me, I will trust him. All depends on you, you, what we're going to do. And, and you know, we, we, how we react, you know, well, for instance, in Hebrews we read about the chastening. He says, no chastening for the present seemeth joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, see, nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Hebrews 12, verse 11. Afterwards, it's not just, uh, not just the afterwards of time, but it's the afterwards of the, the day. It's afterwards of life. It's after, maybe we won't even get, wait till we get to heaven. And we're going to see the beauty of it all, but we're going to see that all things work together for good. And so we give ourselves to Jesus and we love Jesus and we don't understand why these things happened in our life. And we don't say, God, why did you do that? We say, dear Jesus, what are you teaching me? What do you want me? Do you want me to be more, more humble? You want me to be more generous? You want me to be more forgiving, more kind? It could be a thousand different things. And so all of these things come to us and then we have to do this. We have to just... Do, Put everything in God's hands. So I want to ask you, my friends, do you believe in God? Do you believe in the providence of God? Do you believe in the sovereignty of God? Do you believe in the love of God? Well, we can tell for sure how you feel by how you re react to the hard things of life. You show it. It's going to come out. And not the nice, easy, sweet things. We can all handle that. But the better things, well, when they come, do you still believe in God? When the hard things come and you're hurt and you're sick and you're in bed and you've got pain or a loved one's taken, well, do you still believe in God? Do you still love God? Do you still trust God? If you do, then you can be strong and you can be true for the Lord. And you can come through every battle loving the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there was a man named Paul. And this Paul, he wasn't a fair-weather friend, fair-weather Christian. He was a battle-scarred warrior. And he went through, well, let me tell you what he did. Some, he, he, he was a soldier for Christ. He was a veteran for God. He was a man who had had scars for Jesus Christ. He was a warrior for Christ. He was sold out to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you some of the things of the battles of the, in his life he, he endured. He endured hunger and thirst and loneliness and sickness and prison and robberies and beatings and shipwrecks. He doesn't complain and he doesn't whimper and he doesn't feel sorry for himself and he doesn't feel like God is forsaking him at all. Never, never, he says, he says, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. God bless St. Paul. And that's the way we have to live, see, because Paul actually rejoiced in the things because they were working out for good. In time, it's going to show. It may not show this very minute, but in the time, all things work together for good. He lists all these things. 
not just the happy things, but the tough, hard things of life. Friend of mine, none of these things can be called good. Every one of them was a trial. Every one of them was a heartbreak. Every one of them looked like a setback. And yet Paul looked back and he says, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. All these things. You know, it takes great faith to believe that verse. All things work together for good to those of the Lord. Anyone can sing when the sun is shining, but when the storm breaks over your head and the storm clouds are there and you're able to say, I love Jesus Christ. I love God. And though he slay me, I'll trust him. And all things work together for good. One of the most important words in the whole scripture is together. As a matter of fact, that's the key word, together. You see, because so many of the happenings of life are not pleasant. Some are hard and they hurt. Oh God, how they hurt. They make no sense and they look like defeats in life and all of these things. But so in our life, we're going to have all of these things come to pass. But hold on, you don't have the whole picture yet. You haven't got it all put together. You've just seen part of it. Don't throw up your hands and give up. You can instead lean on the Lord Jesus Christ and the hard and bitter things of life who go to make up the final scene. And when we see that final scene, oh my God, it will be beautiful. It will make sense. And we'll say, oh God, you were right. I didn't see it at the time, but oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's the way we have to live. And see, when we look at the events in our life today, it's got to be in his time. When in his time, see, we trust the Lord. And in his time, he'll go to, the picture will be finished. Uh, it'll be a full picture. It'll be a final picture. It'll be a finished picture. It'll be a beautiful picture when it's all put away and all done. And do you know what? You are not going to get the full picture today, and you're not going to get the full picture till to, uh, tomorrow, and you're not going to get the full picture till we meet God in glory, and then we're going to see it, and it's going to be beautiful, and I want to be a part of it. And I have to just give my heart to Jesus because when I get to heaven, uh, we'll say, God will say, here it is. Here's the picture. How do you like it? And we'll say, I've never said anything, never saw anything so beautiful. And all of those hard things of life, they're all gone. And the beauty of it all, because all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Now, we can't prove this world. We can't prove that this verse is true in this world. All things work together for good. Because we have to wait until we get to heaven. But remember what Jesus says? In that day. He says, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. What day? That day in heaven. Not tomorrow, not a week from now, but in heaven. So dearly, for dear friend of mine, here we are. How are you getting along in life? Are you hurting today? Are you been discouraged today? Well, you take courage because you're part of that picture. And you hang on and you trust Jesus. And he'll never give you more than you can carry. And he'll always be with us. He said he'll be with us to the end of the age. And when those things hurt and when they don't make sense, oh my, just remember this, my friends. The final chapter has not been written. The last brush stroke has not been on the canvas. The picture isn't complete. The final, final mile run of the race isn't over yet. The final curtain call hasn't been made. It's all in his time when he's ready and he'll take us there and we'll see it all. Now then I ask you, if you really believe that, they, that they, all these things, that God can bring all these things together, do you believe, like David said, my times in Psalm 31, verse 15, my times are in thy hand? Can you say with St. Paul, I know all things work together for good to the Lord? I don't understand this and I don't understand that. But I know this. I know I have a God and he has all power and he loves me. And I know he loves me because he gave his only begotten son. Would you give your son to die for somebody else, your enemies? 
He gave his son, his sinless, perfect, beautiful son, Jesus who came. And that's the God that's in control. And if you look at that Savior who leads us, you look close and you'll see some scars in his hands. And you'll see some scars in his feet. And you'll see it in his side. And why are they there? Because he died for you. And dare I say that I don't trust him? I suspect him? I wonder and I doubt a little? Do I dare say that? Come on. You have to have Jesus. That's the first thing, and you need to pray for Jesus. He says, Him that cometh unto me I no wise cast out. As many as received him, you just say, Dear Jesus, please come into my heart and take away my sin. And I'll turn from my sin the best I can and I'll follow you. You just do that and then you thank him and tell somebody. And if you do know Jesus and you're hurting today and you don't know which way to turn, turn to Jesus. Put everything in his hands, this wonderful God. And one of these bright sunny days, the trumpet will sound and the Lord will return or the Lord will take us to be with him. And then when we see, oh, St. John said, he says, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard all the glorious things of heaven. And that beautiful picture we're painting in heaven, our life on earth. Oh, my dear God, it'll take away our breath. Trust him, love him. Dear Jesus, we just love you so much. And we know you love us. And we just love you and we give you our, all our heart and our soul. And we trust you and someday we're going to see it. In your time, we're going to see it. Bless everyone, those hurting, those old, those are, those are shut-ins. Young people not knowing which way to turn, bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, friends, if you want our service, you think our service is worth carrying on, you think we ought to do it, you got to help us financially. And you have to send it to the Christian Worship Hour. And the box is 2002, 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota. Or you can use it on the Internet, christianworshiphour.com, and you can give it by PayPal. But we need your prayers and we need your gifts. And if we don't have your gifts, then we have to just skip it. We have to drop, we have to drop a station. We don't want to do that. And so you just pray about it and you ask God what you want, what he wants you to do. And you'll know, Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And we'll thank you and we'll go along as long as God provides. And if he doesn't provide, then we'll just stop because we're not going to be in it if he isn't in it, that's for sure. And so if he provides, if he wants it, he'll provide if he doesn't, then we'll just close up. But it's all in the Lord's hands. So God bless you. The Lord loves you. Christian Worship Hour loves you. And the Lord willing, see you next week. God bless you, everyone. You've been watching the Christian Worship Hour, the weekly broadcast that brings good news to the lost and encouragement to the believer. We hope that today's program has been a blessing in your life. Support our ministry by contacting us at the Christian Worship Hour, P.O. Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402, or visit us online at christianworshiphour.com. Be sure to join next week for another life-changing message from Pastor Salem.